You're saying two. Do. No, I'm going do. Well, I know that, but it sounds like two, so I'm going. Hey, welcome back to our stupid Rex of Corbett. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you to everybody who supports us on Patreon. Follow us on official Twitter account. Subscribe to the unlike button. Muchos thank yous. And today we have another thing about the uh, um, the, the the moon mission. Uh, oh, great! But I is, hope it's about political satire. Yes, uh, <laughs> but this one is actually the quite the reason I'm doing it is because it's Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about it, and I do love me some Neil deGrasse Tyson. Love me some Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, he's talking specifically about the Indian moon landing awesome. and its significance. I, oh, I'm, uh, love to hear his perspective uh, on this. Love Neil deGrasse Tyson. If you just like listen to smart people talk about space a lot. Uh, he's a great one to listen to. Talk uh, about pretty much anything. Yes. He, he talks about so many different things. He's just a really wonderful contributor to world conversation. Yes. So <laughs> even if it's some stuff we've heard about, I just want, I like hearing Neil Gus. And so since he's talking about something India related, uh, I just wanted to we'll watch this. I got sent this as well. So uh, here we go. And when it comes to science, he kind of knows what he's talking about. Kind of a little bit of a specialty there for him, I think. I delivered something when I was doing Postmates to his office. Oh, really? Once. He wasn't there, but. I see two major milestones here. Uh, one is that there are now four countries who have safely and softly landed on the moon. Well, what an amazing insight. He... The <laughs> From the Russia, the Soviet Union, the United States, China, and now India. Uh, I, I'd like it when the whole world participates in things and not just one country or another. So this is an important step. It's it's a it's a sign to us all that space is everyone's backyard. And I foresee a day when in 10 years, 20 maybe, where there are 10 countries or 50 countries. And so we are all then voyagers to this beautiful grand home we call our universe. So so it's fourth out of how many in the future? I hope it's many more. So that's the first. Second, um, as is true for any science project, you don't want to redo what someone else has done and already been verified. Mm. You want to do something new. Yeah. So I'm glad India did not land in the same place everybody else has landed on the moon. That's not interesting. You chose a place where no one has landed before. And that's the south polar region of the moon. Now, you might have missed it by a day. The Russian spacecraft, a Luna... Tried. Five, was it? I forgot. Yeah. Um, that failed to land successfully. And so now, with this safe landing, Chandrayaan-3, um, you're the first ones in, in on the block. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's, a, that's, a, that's an important place to be. Everyone will be watching you. And the results of this experiment, and this rover, and this lander, and the search for water. We think there's water in the South Polar regions for very interesting uh, scientific reasons. So I see those as the two, uh, the two milestones. And when Chandrayaan two failed, I I said to myself, okay, well, there's time to learn from that failure. All right. Nothing wrong with failing when you're doing something no one has done before. You expect failure. Mm. So you need to train the audience to recognize that, okay, we learn from that. And we make adjustments for the next mission so that those same mistakes are not made. If you make the same mistakes, no excuse. Bad. You <laughs> make different mistakes, that's, you kind of expect that. And this one is going along smoothly so far. And at the time we are recording this, they have yet to deploy the rover. So congratulations on the soft landing. They have but deployed the rover already. But that's just the end of the beginning. We now have the beginning of the science and the engineering and the other uh, technical questions getting asked. So we look forward to what those results will, would be. Also, when Prime Minister Modi came through the United States, and I had the privilege of meeting him at the time, um, he confirmed for me that he would be signing, and he did sign, the Artemis Accord, 
which is a document, I forgot how many pages, a dozen pages or so, detailing a cooperative conduct in space for this generation's spacefaring nations on the science you would do, the peaceful uses of that science, the sharing of the data. So That's great. with India landing in the South Pole, making the first measurements there, that will help inform subsequent <clears throat> missions to the South Pole, but not only other Indian missions, but other the missions from other nations themselves. Probably will inform our Artemis mission to the moon where we're sending astronauts because they're going to the South Pole. We want to know what you found. So they can, we can readjust and recalibrate and, and reprogram the experiments we would be doing so that we can take advantage of what it is that you discovered there first. Yeah, I think I have to say, just because the, the money, States, we know how to do things expensively. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> it. The money. We're good at spending money on missions. The fact that Chandrayaan <laughs> cost seventy-four million. Uh, That's in, insane. In seventy-four million dollars. Um, you know, like Adele just bought a house for that much, <laughs> right? We spend more on movies, our science fiction movies. Yeah. Um, and our missions are typically the unmanned missions are typically at least twice that much, typically five times that much, mm -hmm. and occasionally. <laughs> Ten times that much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I would be curious how you do it uh, so affordably. That's important because if you do it affordably, it means you can do it more times. Yeah. Okay. And do new and things. And it's less of a loss if one of them fails. All of this matters in the total, the total um, ecology of a space program. If everything costs a lot of money, then all your eggs in one basket, and if that fails, uh, what do you do, okay? you got to start from scratch again. I was delighted to read what adjustments were made on the Chandrayaan 3 relative to 2 once they figured out why that second mission failed. It was, it was just what's supposed to happen when you're clever engineers and, um, for example, they made sure because the south pole of the moon is is more treacherous there's it's not as smooth and flat as the regions selected by the apollo as uh, uh, by the apollo era astronauts uh, in the united states we chose the flattest parts of the moon of course well, that makes land, sense yeah because we don't want to get all the way to the moon and have them tip over because there's a cliff at the original landing site that we didn't anticipate so here in the south pole it, the terrain is much rougher so they built a wider uh, search and um, uh, capacity and fuel to go with it to s find a safer place, a open your landing zone so that you can, so that's not a risk to you. Just what should happen. And you can do that when your missions are not all that expensive. So my, I tip my hat to this. We're going to want to know how you guys did it. And that's a good thing. Yeah, so, you know, if I can get geopolitical on you, uh, yeah, we stopped going to the moon in 1972. Because we, we beat we Russia. Stayed, but we didn't. <laughs> we could have gone in 1980, but we didn't. 1990, 2000, 2010. Nope, 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 nope. We went to the moon and stopped going to the moon when we first believed Russia was going to the, the Soviet Union was going to the moon. Find out they weren't or they ended their plans, and then we ended our plans. So, no, we didn't go to the moon because we're explorers and it's in our DNA. No, we, we just had to beat the Soviets. We feared yep. Russia. Yep. Let's be honest with ourselves about that past. All right. So the United States is very good at reacting to a perceived threat. We're, we're excellent at that. Yep. Less good at being proactive. Yep. <laughs> we can be, if motivated... But we're especially motivated in reacting. As long as we view that as a potential threat. Yes. So what happens <laughs> or if there's oil. Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> China rises up. Yep. With one of the world's largest economies. Mm. They build a Are they communist program. too? Yes. We mm. didn't invite them. Weird coincidence. The International Space Station. They were excluded <laughs> from this cooperative agreement of space experiments and space, um, uh, permanent space 
presence. So they built their own space program, launched their own astronauts, Taikonauts, they call them. They built, they're building their own space station. They've got their own missions to the moon. And that's what they're doing. And China lately has been kind of a frenemy of the United States. You know that word, frenemy, kind of a friend. And they're our friend, and we have a lot of financial co-minglings, but there are all these geopolitical issues that create some tension. And so China says they want to go back to the moon. We say we're going back to the moon. To me, that is the simplest and easiest explanation for what I see. I encourage people, by the way, um, that our space program didn't really represent the country and all the diversity of the country until we had astronauts and engineers that represented everyone in the country. And so I know that one out of six residents of India is Muslim, okay? Very important legacies, not only in the Hindu traditions of mathematics and contributions to math and science mm -hmm. back centuries ago, mm -hmm. there are Muslim traditions in science, especially the, the golden age of Islam a millennium ago. So if you want to energize children, you can tell them about these legacies. And you say, if you want to continue these legacies forward into space, let's come together and do this together. It's a beautiful and point. All the intellectual capital of the country is available to that frontier. Because without it, it's not, if everyone is not participating, you're not necessarily getting the best minds who are out there. Or histories. And so we went through that during our Apollo era. That was the civil rights movement here in the United States. Yep. Okay? Inspired by Martin Luther King, himself inspired by Gandhi. All right? So, so no, I could not have been part of the space program in the 1960s. They weren't thinking of me. Right. I'm in the backwaters by whatever attitudes prevailed. So uh, this is an appeal. All I'm saying, you can, the space exploration could be one of the greatest engines of peace the world has ever seen because we're all in this together as residents of a country mm. and ultimately residents of planet Earth to explore. Maybe don't cut off Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> he's so, he speaks, what a great video. He speaks so well. I love listening to him. Mm -hmm. He's he's incredibly articulate. He's also extremely insightful. He's mm -hmm. amazingly empathetic. He's so reasonable. He's so fun to watch when he's talking with people who have opposing views because he's such a generous conversationalist. And when they present things that are for other people who would be so intolerant and impatient with the answer, he he sees it as an opportunity to educate and also to learn where they're, he always comes from an, a, a place of, I don't know what all I'm learning, mm -hmm. even though he knows way more than the average bear. And I agree completely with everything he said, most especially at the end there that, that you know, I've, I've often thought <laughs> interstellar and, and interdimensional beings who would look at this planet must, I, I just, I've said often to Indrani and my kids, said if I was, a, if I was one of those beings and I came by the U.S., I, I wouldn't get, I mean, the Earth, I wouldn't get too close either. I'd be rolling down the window going, yeah, I don't know, I'm going to move on. Because we, 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 we don't treat each other as one race. We, we treat each other as these places with these boundaries we've put on ground on our maps. And all it takes is one enemy outside of what we know. And um, you'd be amazed at the unity we would find. No. Yeah. No. You would be amazed. Um, yeah. Suddenly, we'd all need to be working together. Um, I didn't, are we going back to the moon? I didn't even know that. Everybody's going back to the moon. No, like as like as uh, astronauts are going back to the yeah, moon. Yeah, everybody's going back to the moon. I didn't know. Yeah, but that's the difference because I don't know. I Mars, I didn't know. Whereas he pointed out the motivation, and it, it's true. It, it, it has been geopolitical both in the 60s and then again with what was going on with, with China. I'm not convinced that that is a primary motivation in any way, shape, or form for India. I think, I, and it's very clear by reason of the thing he referenced that's going to be shared information – I think it's. I think the motivation for India has been purely scientific. 
are there geopolitical parts of it? I'm sure there are, but unlike America, mm. the primary reason for it, I believe, is exploration and science, mm -hmm. whereas our motivations in our past have been geopolitical, yeah. science secondary. What do you say? There's probably never been a better country at reacting than the United States. <laughs> yeah. The most united we ever... And probably, not being proactive. Yeah, the most united we've probably ever been as a country was probably right after 9-11. That uh, and World War II. But both of those were yeah, reactionary. Reactionary. I mean, because something happened to us. To us, because the rest of the world was yelling at America to get way involved. before Pearl Harbor of, please get involved. Do you not see what the Nazis are doing and what's what's going on with Mussolini? And, what, yeah. and we were like, eh, not interested. Yeah, not interested. Pearl Harbor... Let's get it! Yeah. Same thing with 9-11. Yeah. Suddenly we're unified because we've yeah. been attacked. <laughs> now we are most definitely not unified. <laughs> and yeah, 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 I know all the reasons behind 9-11, but that's the point, is he's correct. You know them? No, no, no. I'm, the ones they're going to be putting down of... Bush did 9-11. Yeah. We all know it. It was created in order uh, for us to go get the oil. Uh, Bush. Uh, I told you. Oil. But this <laughs> this was a great video. America's great, great to hear his perspective. to other people's oil. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, great video. Love listening to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Once again, congrats to India. Uh, as always, uh, looking forward Leading to the way. everything that we're going to uh, learn from this mission. And, and it's no shock that India is going to be at the forefront of everything scientific. With as they the should be. As they should be. So, let us know uh, any other videos we can react to down below.